So here we have 11.5 solving an equation involving logarithms on both sides, problem type one. So the idea is, is you want to be able to use that property that lets you switch back and forth between the two forms. And you have to have an equation and then the equation gets switched. Um, but in order for me to use that, I have to make sure that um, that I have just one logarithm and I have just one number on the other side. So I see the regular number here, which means that's going to need to stay put. I want this logarithm to be over there with that logarithm. So I'm going to add log base 5 of x plus 6 to both sides. And so then what it looks like is it looks like log base 5 of x plus 2 plus log base 5 of x plus 6 equal to just the 1. Now I almost have what I need but I have one log not two terms. So if I combine these I'm since it's a plus sign that means I'm going to multiply the two arguments together. And then I can switch the forms over. So when I switch over the forms, it's going to be 5 raised to this exponent equal to that argument. So then I just have 5 equal to x squared plus 8x plus 16, if I FOIL that out and combine my like terms. And then I'm going to minus 5 on both sides. So 16 minus 5 will give me 11. I would try to factor this, but there's no factors of 11 that will add to give me 8. So I'm going to go ahead and use the quadratic formula. And then let's see what we get. So um, 8 squared minus 4 times 1 times 11 is 20 over 2 and so then we get I'm going to come over here because I have some space over here we get x equal to and this one it does ask you it depends on whether it's going to ask you for the exact answer or for the decimal answers so I'm going to assume that it's going to ask you for the exact so let me simplify this square root of 20 does simplify into 2 square root of 5 and then if I divide each term by 2, I get negative 4 plus or minus just square root of 5 because this will reduce to 2 and that will reduce to 2. Uh, essentially, I, I'll do the work. Um, but essentially what you're doing is you're separating the fraction and you're saying negative 8 over 2 plus or minus 2 square root of 5 over 2. And then you simplify that one and then you simplify that one. Okay. And so these are both the exact answers okay and I shouldn't put a box on them because I don't know which one um, one of them may be the solution both of them may be the solution or none of them may be the solution okay so I'm just gonna put two things so I have negative 4 plus square root of 5 and then I have negative 4 minus square root of 5 now in order for me to do the decimals um, or actually let's figure out which ones are solutions first before we do the decimals now, remember the idea here. The idea is, is that you cannot have a negative base or a negative argument, but my variables are in the arguments. So I need to make sure that neither one of these guys is going to be a negative value given these two numbers. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to say negative 4 plus the square root of 5 plus 2. Let's see what decimal that is. That's a positive answer. We're good for the first one. This one is a correct answer. Well, no, it's not yet. I checked it into this argument, and that argument is good. But now we need to check that same x value in the other argument. So I'm going to go back up here, and instead of plus 2, I'm going to put plus 6 and hit my decimal. That's also a positive answer. So this one is a solution. Now let's check the other one. Um, negative 4 minus square root of 5. And then here I'm going to add 2, and I get a negative number. It doesn't even matter if it works in the other argument. The fact that it makes one of the arguments negative means
means that this is not going to be a solution, okay? So that means I only have one solution, and it's negative 4 plus the square root of 5. Now, this is what I would type in, again, if it wants the exact answer. But if it will allow me to give them a decimal answer, or if it specifically tells you to round, then you would round it to negative 1.7 or whatever decimal place it says to round it to okay I'm rounding it to the thousandths but it will tell you if it wants you to round it will tell you what to round it to okay so same thing for B what I want to do is I want to um, get this number by itself so I'm going to add this to both sides Put the wrong numbers. So then it'll cancel here. And on this side, I have negative log 3 of x minus 2 plus log 3 of x minus 6 equal to 2. And the properties tell us that when you have positive, it's going to get multiplied. When you have negative, it's going to be divided. So the fact that I have a negative on this side means I'm going to have a fraction. And this argument is behind the minus sign so that argument will go in the denominator this argument will go in the numerator because it has a positive log okay so ultimately it will look like this okay but just to make it easier on your eyes what happens if I swap the order of the terms which I can do as long as I keep the signs with them so this guy remains positive, and this one remains negative. Then it's a little bit more obvious that you have this as the numerator and this one as the denominator, okay? And so it's just easier to see if you swap the order. However, you can still apply the old idea that we talked about in a previous video that whichever log Whichever argument has the positive log, that argument will go in the numerator. And whichever log has a negative in front, that argument will go in the denominator. So you don't have to rewrite this step unless you want to or you need to because you need to see it. Okay. So then from here, I'm going to go ahead and switch the forms over. So then when I switch the form over, this becomes 3 to the power 2 equal to x plus 6, x minus 2. So that's 9 equal to this fraction. I'm going to multiply both sides by the common denominator. So these cancel. I'm going to distribute my 9. So I get 9x minus 18 equal to x. I'm going to minus 9x on both sides. Negative 18 equal to negative 8x. Divide by negative 8. I get that x equals... Um, I can divide by 2, so 9 over 4, and negative and negative will become positive. So I get positive 9 over 4. Now before I box it or I answer it, I say that's my final answer, I need to make sure it doesn't make any of the arguments negative. Now this is a positive 9 over 4, so if I take a positive number plus 6, it's just going to be a bigger positive. So it works in this argument. In this argument, I'm not sure. So let's see, 9 over 4 minus 2... I get a positive one. So it does check out into this argument as well. So I can box and type that in Alex and say that is my actual answer.